Hey, it's Diesel, the Night Show Guy here on 93.3 The Planet Rocks. Welcome to the first ever collective intercom interview of Justin Bieber. Psych! Hey, this is Mike Dart. Pretty cool. And Billy Joe from Green Day. Actually, what we did is we came together as a group of intercom radio rock stations and put together some interview questions that we all wanted to ask on this, the day of the release of their new album, Revolution Radio. Hello. So, Billy, Mike, Trey, it's been four years since the release of your epic trilogy, Uno Dos Trey, and in December of last year, you promised to destroy the term pop punk forever. So how are you doing this? That was just a dumb tweet. The only thing I was, it was getting at was I, I don't like the phrase. I don't know, pop punk. It just sounds like a contradiction in turn. So nothing against the bands or yeah. anything like that. So what are you guys drawing from inspiration-wise these days? I think you draw from life, always. Other people's lives, our lives, things around us. Are there any current bands you guys are digging? Um, I think one of, a, a really good new band uh, that I like right now is a band called White Reaper. They're really good. Mike? Oh, Lord. Well, I don't know that there's new bands I'm listening to right now, but I just got a new player system on my, um, on my computer, so I dumped in all my old records onto there. So I think the last thing I listened to was uh, B-1000 by Guided by Voices. Trey, any current bands you're into? Um, I'm digging Gogol Bordello lately. It's always a good time. Now, I can't ask what you're into without asking what you're secretly into and don't want other people to know about. Are there any musical guilty pleasures for you? Billy Joe. I really like that song, I Love It, I Don't Care. What is it, Iconopop? <laughs> Mike. Uh, Patsy Cline. I don't know if that's a guilty pleasure. It's just good. She puts me in a sedate mood that... Sometimes I just need to chillax. Trey, what's your guilty pleasure? Probably like Hank Williams Sr. Now I want to go bigger. I want to know which band to you is the true high priest of punk. The Ramones for me would be the high priest of punk. If we got literal, who else could it be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now when you start planning out tours, you have to decide, are you going to play clubs, big stadiums? If you had a preference for the type of venues you like to play, what would it be? Personally, I like all venues i always get the same kind of feeling uh if whether we're playing a club or theater arena stadium festival it's all great one thing about green day's live show is that the energy can be maintained in a big place of a small club it's probably due to the fact that our fans are completely like bonkers and amazing like they're part of the show you know it's very inclusive so it makes you feel like you're an intimate show even if it's you know like Hyde Park. So by the time people hear this, the new album, Revolution Radio, will be out in stores. What new song are you most excited to release into the wild? I think one of my favorite songs is Still Breathing. I think it's a different direction for us, but at the same time, it, it sort of embodies what Green Day and our sound really is. Trey Cool, what are you most excited about playing live off the new album? I'm excited that people are finally going to hear the record in order of all the songs, you know, like, <laughs> Somewhere now, I've just been dying to play live. Yeah, I'm excited for everybody to play or to hear all the songs so we can play them as well. I think Outlaws is going to be a great one for people to put their headphones on and fall into it. So going back in the day, where were you the first time you heard yourselves on the radio? The first time I ever heard Green Day on the radio, I was in my 1962 Ford Fairlane driving around Berkeley and Longview came on and it was pretty exciting. Sitting on the floor of my bedroom listening to a little clock radio. Yeah, I was on I was in a car also. Don't remember where I was going or you were probably in the back seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brown chicka brown cow. Switching gears, we here at Intercom have an initiative called One Thing. It's the one thing that we can do every day to make the environment better. Use the phrase one thing in your answer. What is the one thing you do to preserve our environment, or better, the planet? Well, one thing we do is uh, I have a coffee company. We have a coffee company, and we um, make it we make all of our packaging compostable. Oakland Coffee is the name of it. And it's uh, not only great coffee, but you feel good about drinking it because you can compost all of the, uh, the packaging along with it from dirt to dirt, just like human bodies. One thing that I can do to help the environment is not to vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. That may be the greatest answer. That's probably the best answer. Next question. Back when you guys were recording American Idiot, it was rumored that you had recorded an album titled Cigarettes and Valentines and that the masters were stolen. And instead of re-recording the album, you wrote and recorded what would go on to become American Idiot. We got to hear the title track to the lost album on the awesome as f*** 
live album. Will we hear or have we heard anything else from Cigarettes and Valentines? It's possible that you could, we might put something out of the lost record, but I don't think anytime soon. Billy Joe, this question is specifically for you. How does it make you feel to be the father of an aspiring young musician? And does your son ask you for any advice when it comes to songwriting? It's great to have two other musicians in my house, and they happen to be my sons. We talk about music uh, a, a lot, and he never really asked me for advice. We just sort of talk about what cool songs that we like. And we sort of show each other like what, what, we're, what we're up to. A new wave band whose debut record, Money Money 2020, was released in 2003, was rumored to be you guys. You denied it and even created a bit of a fictional beef with the network. It has since been confirmed that it was, in fact, you with alias stage names and masks when you performed live. Where did you get the idea to create an album as The Network, and then the idea to deny it and create this fictional story around the feud between the two bands? Well, those guys, they, they tried to jump on our thing and, and telling people that they were us and, and all that, and I, I think there's a bunch of like students from Germany or something. I, I heard it was the Kraftwerk guys. Are any of you guys cooks, and if so, what's your favorite thing to make? Depends seasonally. Three quarters of almost every meal that... Uh, either myself or my wife, uh, we like to cook a lot together, um, would make is, are usually vegetables of sorts. But um, I love uh, summertime because that's when all the good tomatoes come out. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a salsa fanatic. I do love me some good hot salsa. Now let's play a little game of would you rather. Would you rather bourbon or bacon? Bacon. Uh, I would say bacon smoked bourbon. There you go. Bourbon, but I can't do that anymore. So bacon. <laughs> Next question, would you rather tacos or tequila? Tacos. Tacos. And bacon. <laughs> bacon tacos. Ooh. Wash it down with a little reposado. Last question with Mike, Billy, and Trey Cool of the band Green Day. Besides the obvious, name three things that have changed in your lives between your first album and now. Oh, jeez. Um... <laughs> Name how many things? Three things. The way we put out records. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we put out vinyl then, we put out vinyl now, but now instead of putting out CDs as much, we put out downloads. Mm -hmm. And I've changed my underwear since then too. Well, we all appreciate you for that. Thank you. Billy Joe Armstrong, Trey Cool, Mike Dirt from the band Green Day. Congratulations on the new album Revolution Radio in stores now. Thank you for taking part in this Intercom Collective interview.